I'm going to uh, I'm going to chronologically break down yesterday's uh, officer involved shooting, and then I'll let uh, Chief Grotto have the mic, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, yesterday morning, just before 7:10, uh, there was a disturbance on an uh, RTD bus. Uh, the individual that ultimately had the confrontation with officers uh, created a disturbance on the bus. We think somewhere in the area between uh, Alameda and Lincoln and First and Lincoln. At one, he was asked to get off the bus. It was reported to the, the transit officers. They then began a search for this, this individual as he had caused some damage on the bus. In the area of 7th and Lincoln, uh, RTD transit officer uh, spotted this individual. Uh, confronted him, was trying to get some compliance to talk to him, at which point the, uh, the gentleman pulled out a weapon and there was a, kind of an armed confrontation between the RTD officer and uh, this gentleman uh, that ultimately had the, the confrontation with the Denver police down the street. Um, the officer uh, was attempting to de-escalate, was asking him to drop the weapon. He refused. Um, some other officers did show up at that time. The, uh, they did not have any kind of lethal confrontation with him at that time. The uh, individual then began to walk northbound on Lincoln. He was on the east side of the street. He, uh, the area of 8th and Lincoln, he put the weapon in the air and shot one round into the air, uh, at which time everybody recognized that it, it was what it was. It was, it was an actual gun. They then, uh, the RTD officer continued to follow, call out descriptions, and at that time the communication was shifted over to our DPD. The Denver police officer were, were getting live information as to how this was transpiring. Um, the RTD officer continued to give his locations and updates on the suspect's activity. Uh, throughout this process between 8th and approximately 10th Avenue, the the suspect was seen to be waving the gun around throughout this process, putting several people in jeopardy that were either driving by or in businesses or walking out of businesses, so that was of concern. The uh, RTD officer was keeping us abreast of all that activity. Approximately 10th and Lincoln, he observed several Denver police officers coming into the area, at which time he disengaged and handed over that, that operation and incident to the Denver police officer officers, I should say. The Denver police officer that ultimately had the armed confrontation was the first to really get, gauge, get a gauge of where this individual was. The officer put himself in a tactical position on the east uh, side, uh, correction, so he's on the east side of the street. The uh, suspect was walking along the west side of the street. I, I correct myself, I think I said east earlier, but so uh, he's, he's, he's walking along kind of adjacently. Um, trying to determine if he sees the gun in his hand still. Probably as he's passing 10th, he realizes that he still has a gun in his hand. He then gives verbal, several verbal commands to this individual to drop the gun. The um, person verbally states no. We heard that on officer's uh, body warrants. There might be some other video from other individuals in the area that would capture that same uh, dialogue between the officer and the suspect. The officer was taking a lot of things into consideration while he's on that block. Obviously, he, his concerns were traffic, uh, foot traffic, and any, any citizens or that might be in any of these uh, adjoining businesses along that block. So he's, he's constantly trying to gauge that because he, the, the sanctity of life and just, just being diligent in how we, we handle these situations is of utmost importance to us. He did realize the traffic had been successfully shut down, at which time he felt that it was an opportune time as this individual passed some businesses and had a backdrop of a vacant parking lot with just one or two cars in it that he decided that was the best time to, to, to confront him, and uh, at which time he had his, uh, his rifle. He was armed with an AR-15, uh, our officer. He found a point of cover behind a tree trunk and started to verbally engage the suspect. The suspect then turned around at uh, one point, pulled up the gun, 
shot around into the air and then started to level the point of aim in the direction of the officer, at which time the officer fired uh, a couple of shots and uh, that ended the confrontation. That's, that's the, the breakdown chronologically. Um, from the time that the officers got the call was approximately 7.10. They got the call of the, uh, the shots fired in the area of 8th and Lincoln. First officers arrived, arrived on scene around 7.13 a.m. and the confrontation was ended by 7.15 a.m. So there was a, a very quickly evolving uh, situation. So at this time I'm going to pass the mic over to, to Chief Grotto and then we can open up for questions. Yeah, I, I think Chief did a great job covering it. The only thing I'll add is uh, this initially uh, started on the bus and it was reported to us through the RTD Transit Watch app. And uh, our officer just happened to be very close in the neighborhood, so they, uh, we had a very quick response. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. Um, yeah, it was, it was uh, windshield was, was busted on the bus. You want to answer these or I'll just say you know RTD our transit police division we're a specialized unit and obviously we rely on partners such as the Denver Police Department so I don't want to speak since this is an active investigation I'll, I'll let the chief talk to that yeah, and I, I really can't give you a, a factual answer on that if whether or not uh, he used a weapon to break the window we just know the window was was broken by this individual No, no, and I, I, to our knowledge, there was, he never produced the, the handgun on the bus at any time. How many rounds did he fire in total? Uh, two. Two that were, uh, two live rounds. We did find some expended non, uh, rounds that were not uh, shot, uh, which would indicate to us that he just was, in racking the slide, that these came popping out at some point along his travels. But two, two live rounds were shot that, uh, that we know. Have you guys connected the gun to any other crime? We have not even got to that point in the investigation to see, but that is a very good question. As you know, we're very active in, in CJIC and NIBIN, so that will be a step that we will definitely look at. Thank you. In the witness video, you see the RTD officer engaging with the suspect, and then you see a white SUV with another man behind the door with the, with the weapon. Correct. Who is that? That is a uh, Denver police detective who happened to just, he was driving into work, and he happened upon it. He wasn't even aware of what the situation was. So he jumped in and he too, like, like the RTD officer, recognized the threat, but at the point made a decision not to pull the trigger because he did not feel that his life was in, in the, the level of jeopardy that he felt he needed to, to shoot the suspect at that time. How crucial was it to have that RTD officer right there, right at that beginning of the It was very crucial because um, he was the eyes and ears. He, he bravely followed this individual in close proximity throughout this process. I am comfortable that at any point he felt somebody was in danger, a citizen, that he probably would have taken the, the actions. Um, but him, him being the eyes and ears and, and really guiding us in, we knew pretty much everything we needed to know at that point, the clothing, uh, that he was, had a weapon. Um, so. It was it was crucial that that he did, and he he too, like I said, he was continually gauging his activities along the route. So had there been something that uh, dire that was that, that happened where he's confronting a, a citizen and they're in, in extreme danger, then I think he would have been in the position, along with some of those other officers in the area, to to quickly act upon that. We don't know that. We have not uh, delved into how he got access to that fire. No, it was it was uh, it was just really direct. Drop the weapon. No, drop the weapon. No, drop the weapon. No. Um, Did he appear mentally ill, or was he showing? It's hard for me to to to, to state that. You know, obviously his actions were a little erratic. Um, I can't state whether or not I can, without a doubt, say that it, mental illness played a part in this. But. Well, we're gonna we're gonna wait to to delve into that. Uh, I can say he had minimal criminal history. Uh, we're still trying to to locate family members to notify them of the death before we 
we disclose his name. We're working diligently to try to find someone. And at that point, then we'll be able to, to disclose his uh, background with us. Was the gunman homeless? We do not know that yet. We're still trying to... We're trying to backtrack and figure out, you know, who, who his family was, if he had somewhere he stayed, if he was homeless. Uh, at this point, that's still part of the investigation piece we're looking at. When can we expect him to be um, I'm hoping within the next uh, one to two days. Uh, like I said, we're diligently working uh, with to, to connect with family members. Uh, I think if we just are completely unable to do that, at which time the coroner makes a identification, I think, and in uh, good faith to, to, you know, uh, to get the information out that we will disclose the name at that time. Is your officer who did fire and take the suspect down, how long was he or she with your department? 18 years. Uh, no, other, uh, uh, no other history of ever having an armed confrontation on, in those 18 years with the Denver Police Department. And he is on administrative leave at this point. How many rounds did the police fire? Three. Same, same rifle? Yes. Chief, you mentioned yes. an app. Was a member of the public your first? Yeah, it was actually a passenger um, on the bus that reported it to us. Can you explain how that works? Um, RTD offers, you know, we have several methods to report to us if there's a security or safety incident. Um, one is this app, uh, and through that they can text message us, they can send pictures, gives us GPS location of where they are. Uh, we've got over 25,000 subscribers to that app, so... Uh, we like it. It helps uh, us manage the security on the system and, and gives our ridership uh, the ability to kind of participate in the security of the transit operation. So. And you said the windshield was damaged. I assume you're not saying close proximity to the driver, or was the driver not on the bus? Or how's your driver? The, the driver's fine. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was the front windshield that was busted on the bus. And was the driver sitting in the driver's seat? Yes, side? yeah. No, you know, I'll say this. Um, the officer involved has been a police officer for 33 years, came to us. No, with another agency, a large agency, um, and he's been with us for three and a half years. So uh, the, internally, our transit police were post-certified police officers. We have the same training as any other law enforcement agency, um, go through the same process and annual certification process. So. And how is he doing today? He's doing good. He's, he's doing okay. Uh, obviously... Uh, this was a very tense situation, and, and um, he, he was challenged to something that, you know, I've been in law enforcement 32 years. I've never had to face that. So um, I think he's handling it remar remarkably well, and we're just we're giving him a little time away just to gather his thoughts and uh, kind of, you know, best practices to do that, and, and uh, we want to bring him back in, um, in good spirits and ready to perform. Uh, it did. It did. And I, I can't speak to how many. I do know that there were various uh, uh, pieces of video that were provided to us to uh, to look at this throughout the process, uh, you know, at the at the point of the confrontation between the officer and the individual and on the front end of it. So uh, obviously we evaluate all that to, to look for consistency and how everything happened. And uh, it was it was helpful. And we did get some after the call uh, went out uh, from the chief in the morning. I um, believe it is, but uh, I'd not. I'd, I'd, I'd have to take a look at the video. I have not seen the the, the full thing. Um, once once everything's adjudicated, that's always a possibility. I can't speak to that right now. But the video shows the exchange of fire, or, or the, the officer firing at the. Yeah, you you see from the vantage point, it's obvious that the officer is firing the the shots and. Uh, um, you know, those, sometimes the body warrants are tricky with the position, especially when it's a rifle, because sometimes that kind of blocks the view. I mean, you can put together what's happening based on the officer's verbal and what you can see of it, but sometimes you can't get a, a clear-cut picture, because especially, like I said, with rifles, that uh, makes it a little difficult. And was the assessment hit three times? Uh, we're still trying to determine that, that to be part of the, the coroner's uh, report for us. Was that like a money pouch or 
I am not sure. I know he did. He was reported to have been carrying some baggage, and, and uh, early on it was reported as luggage. We do know he was carrying a bag with him, um, so I'm, I'm not sure what that is. Yet. Can you just speak about, like you mentioned earlier, brush hour traffic, so many people heading into work, and how it played out much differently if it wasn't for you know, the RTD officer and that detective and working together? Right. I mean, it, it is such a, it's a critical, and, and thank goodness it was as early as it was in the morning because you'd think 11 or noon in that area, uh, you know, it would have been extremely difficult uh, situation to handle. Uh, however, you know, having the, the RTD officer that close proximity and, and armed really did, I think, help manage the situation into which uh, the Denver police were able to get in and, and uh, take control of everything, including the traffic. And, you know, and, and we're not just talking about vehicle traffic, we're talking about foot traffic and, and making sure no one wanders into this area and, and isn't put in jeopardy. Sir, was there a video on the bus of this person? Uh, yes. Is there? Yeah, there, there is video on the bus. All of our, well, most of our buses do have high definition video. Um, we have an investigations unit also that retrieves this video and packages it up. But that is given to the Denver Police Department for the investigation, so um, they are in control of that video at this time. Can you characterize what it shows? Have you seen it? I have not seen it. Are we releasing the names of your officer and your officer who fired the shots at all? Eventually, once, yeah. once we get to that point in the investigation. We'll... Yeah, at this time, it's um, just I'd, I'd like to have privacy for the officer, obviously. It's, this was a big deal. And of course, it still is an open investigation for us at this point.